kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, I've also had somebody come to me about wanting to purchase a rental. I, I, I get buyers like that all the time, maybe whether they're new buyers or um, or anything like that. They Maybe they want to do a, a bird deal or a buy and hold, you know, things like that. I will give them my opinion, but I will also preface that I do not hold properties at the moment. I only can give you the knowledge that, that I've gained through my wholesaling and that I gather from my other buyers okay so i always keep keep that preface there is that i i'll try to do my best as much as possible and i'll try to find you the best deals out there um you know if i can find them great and if they work with your numbers great but i I'll, I, I'll try to teach you how to do the numbers and i'll show you how to uh, cover for all type of scenarios you have to include the the one thing that people do not include is property taxes being uncapped and also the property taxes going from um, homestead to non-homestead as well as being uncapped so you got to account for that you have to account for property management um, capital expenditure um, as well as the initial renovation so uh Johnny Dapper, how you doing? Hi all. So happy to have you here. So, um, you know, I'm I, again, you know, I'm happy to go over this with anybody. We could do a one on one video. Um, I'm offering them as long as we can record it. It's for free. No problem. I'm not a YouTube guru by any means. I'm just trying to share my experiences in my life. That's all. Um, I've worked with some of the some great wholesalers in this area and I still make mistakes by all means I I've made so many man mistakes um and to be all be as transparent as possible I thought that I was going to have okay this is the month of May and my goal was to have at least two deals per month okay and I thought I was gonna have uh you know, I thought I was going to have at least 10 deals by now. Okay. How's it going, Freddie? Freddie, how you doing? Nice to see you. You're on, that's Freddie off of Facebook there. Um, I thought I was going to have 10 deals by now. And unfortunately, I only have one that it's been lingering for, it was lingering for a long time. Um, I got to, I, I, I really got to thank uh, Todd Chun for getting to the closing table with me. Um, it was a hard deal uh, by any means. Uh, we had about three, four buyers back out, you know, and we still kept going. So that's all about the only way that that work, that type of deal works is if you have a good relationship with the buyer or with the seller, sorry, with the seller and keep open communication. Okay. I try to be as transparent as possible. Okay. Now they don't need to know everything, but I'd be as transparent as possible as much to let them know what the process and how it's going and, and things like that. So, um, with that being said, it, it's just, um, how do you talk to sellers? How do you bring up that you're wholesaling? How do you, um, let them know in my opinion, you know, you can use words like, um, Hey, I'm working with my partners. Uh, you know, one of the strategies that I use is I, uh, one of the strategies that I use is I bring them, uh, I, I may pass the deal along to another investor, but whatever me and you work out is exactly what you're going to get. And you're going to deal with me the whole time. Okay. So that's one, that's one way that I bring it up. Um, now somebody who's knows what what wholesaling is 
things like that, they're going to understand exactly what you're doing. And a lot of times they don't care as long as they get their dollar. Okay. Now when you got to, that's when you got to beat them down and when you got to beat them down and that's when they're going to fight back. Okay. Um, you know, keep in mind as well is when you get a deal under contract and then you start marketing it out. If there, this is the reason why you have to keep open communication with your seller. If you don't keep open communication with your seller and let them know what's going on, what you're doing, things like that. And then you get, say, a buyer who just joined your, your buyer's list. Okay. And they end up calling the seller directly, not contacting you, either letting the seller know what's going on or offering them a higher bid than you got under contract. Okay. Um, and I've had this happen to me before, by the way. Okay. They try to snake the deal behind you. Well, you have it under contract. And, uh, most of the time you can put a, mem uh, a memorandum on the property if you feel like that's going to happen. But a lot of times I've built up a relationship with the seller that literally the, the next call, as soon as they get off that call, they, they call me and say, Hey, do you know this guy who he's trying to give me an offer? Okay. I say, you know what? No, I, I don't know him, but you know what? I'm going to tell you. It, he's probably not going to close. He's probably going to do this, you know, this and that, you know, I'm trying to, I, and I, this is where I keep open communication. Yeah. I want to go with you. I want to make sure that we're, we're doing deal. We're, you know, and that's the advantage versus you ghosting the seller after you get it signed. And a lot of people do this is after a, after the, the contract is signed, they pretty much ghost the seller for, you know, a couple of weeks until they have to do a scheduling to show the property. Okay. You want to keep up, keep the seller up to date on what's going on. Talk with the seller. Hey, you know, Hey, just letting you know, um, let's work on trying to see when we can get in the property or can we get a lockbox on the property or anything like that? I, you know, I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. Um, and you know, and Fugi, uh, hopefully I pronounced your name right. Sorry if I didn't. Uh, yes, that is shady by all means. And I really, really don't like it being, <laughs> I, I, I don't like shady people. I try to, as soon as I find out that somebody does that and I find out who it is, they will never do business with me again, ever. Okay. Um, I'm not going to sit there and go blackballing them but I'm not going to personally ever do business. I don't care if you're the highest offer out there. I know you're not going to, you're not going to live up in, I, I don't know if you're going to close. Okay. Most of the time, a, a buyer is only as good as they're going to close. Okay. That's it. I don't want to sit here and try to, yes, I can go after your EMD deposit, but it's getting harder and harder for us to even collect the EMD deposit because title companies are just horrendous. Okay. I'm telling you that, um, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, we have some people here, uh, let me know what more, what more videos you want, what type of videos you want to see. I'm happy to work, you know, work something out, uh, see if I can create more of that type of content and kind of go from there. Um, I, it does not look like the, uh, Saeed is coming today, unfortunately. So, um, but I'll, I'll give it another five more minutes. Uh, we'll hit that half hour mark, uh, roughly, um, and kind of leave it from there. So, um, all right. So what I, what I was talking about, I'm talking about strategies, what kind of marketing strategies do you guys do? Anybody who's in the chat, tell me what marketing strategies you do. Okay. Holly, Holly's doing cold calling. Holly, do you like cold calling? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Did you start it? Just started it. Are you using a dialer? You know, anything like that. Um, if you are cold calling, Okay. Okay. Direct mail. That is coming from Anique. 
Anik is my man. He direct mail. He gets some good leads in direct mail. He, he's a buyer too. So if you're on Facebook and you see Anik in the chat, do business with him. He's a good guy. All right. Holly says driving for dollars. Those are the great lists. Driving for dollars lists are great. Okay. Because guess what? They may not come up on any other list whatsoever because they may pay their taxes on time. They may pay all their bills on time. Everything's good. But the, the, the yard looks long, the, you know, everything it might be a tire landlord who knows. Okay. Um, oh, Holly says reverse driving for dollars too. I don't know what is, what's a reverse driving for dollars. Hmm. Never heard of that one. So, um, also it, you know, direct mail linking up with buyers. How are you getting your buyers? Are you just posting on Facebook marketplace? Things like that. Are you, are you just posting in the Facebook groups? I may am encouraged for you going to these Facebook groups, but you know, I'm, I'm more of the let go to REI meetups listen to these buyers and see what they're buying at, you know, um, and kind of go from there. So, okay. So Holly said the reverse driving for dollars is a targeted houses. I don't think that's a reverse driving for, for, for dollars, but I think that's like, uh, just a, a standard list that you, you, now you're just trying to verify whether the houses are d distraught or not. So, Either way, if it works for you, it works for you. You know, um, one thing that you gotta um, look at is what works for you and then how can you scale it? Okay, that's a big thing is how can you scale it? All right, I already know that there's a, there's going to be a limit to where what I'm doing and then I eventually will look to scaling, okay? Um, it will be the next step. Uh, Holly says texting as well, texting and cold calling, I think go hand in hand. Um, I haven't started texting myself, but it is something we want to get into. There's a lot of legality in it. Um, there's a lot of different things out there that can, a lot of different tools that are out there that help you, um, and things of that nature. So, um, great i'm happy to see that holly you're doing that um let me know uh you know what are your rois on those you know things like that uh johnny you said what are the some of some of the more cr common creative financing techniques so i haven't done a creative financing deal yet okay there's the key word yet they're out there. I do know of them. I try to pitch them as much as possible. Um, now, with that being said, probably one of the easiest to pitch here in Michigan is going to be a land contract. Okay. A land contract is probably the most common because um, most people are uh, familiar with it. Okay. Uh, but the, you can do a sub two you can do a just a straight up seller finance okay um honestly you can be as creative as you want and as long as the title company and as long as you and the seller can agree on it you can be as creative as you want that's all okay Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 